years, then we haven't even copyrighted our material. We allow people to copy it, to give it away. That's what we want. Eric Hoban tells us that dinosaur death throws give us a flood-consistent death pose. He's so used to misinforming and being misinformed, he doesn't even realize that he can tell you the truth and be right. But that would take actual research. Hello again and welcome to Apologia, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians. In the past few months, I've made two videos discussing Creation Today claims about dinosaur soft tissue. It's a big topic, so I didn't want to distract with side trails, but Eric and his colleagues threw in an extra claim that I wanted to cycle back around to while it's still fresh. My family and I got to spend the day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and we are having a fabulous time. We just went on the dinosaur expedition. There's one problem. You're taking people back to the Cretaceous period rather than back to the flood. I mean, you do realize that we find dinosaurs in what's called the death pose, where their, their back is arched, and they find that reptiles, when they drowned in water, they go into the same death pose, and we find them buried in that position. Eric is talking about an actual, real phenomenon. Creationists like the label death pose because it implies a little more than we actually know. The scientific literature calls it a pistotonic posture. Not quite as catchy. The phenomenon is observed in the skeletal remains of birds, dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and placental mammals, and is marked by an extreme hyperextended posture of the spine, with the skull and neck recurved over the back with a strong extension of the tail. I took this photo of such a specimen at the Royal Terrell Museum in Drumheller, Alberta, Canada where I first learned this trend from a plaque on the wall of the Lords of the Land Room. Several of the remarkably complete skeletons in the museum are in this death pose. But perhaps most famously is this massive T-Rex specimen known as Black Beauty, because it was tinted near black with manganese during fossilization. We'll see this fossil later. Until then, because this museum is one of my favorite places in the world, I'm going to show you some of the photos I've personally taken there, like you're being held hostage with my vacation pics. Allow me to reacquaint you with Eric's guest, Daniel A. Biddle of Genesis Apologetics, and the author of a new book called How Do Dinosaurs Fit Into the Bible? He did a preamble in one of the webinars presenting arguments that humans and dinosaurs live together. The next one is when you look at how rapidly these creatures were buried. For example, we can go through and look at all these pictures that we've taken at different museums around the U.S. and Canada. You'll notice that these dinosaurs, these are some velociraptors and, and some T-Rex examples, that are die, dying in what we call the dinosaur death pose. Their necks are arched back because they're choking on mud during the death process. So they're asphyxiating, they're choking, they're suffocating, gasping for air, and their necks are being arched and pulled back during the death process. This one even shows this happening to a massive T-Rex um, where he's choking on mud, pulling his, necks, his neck back. Did you recognize Black Beauty in there? Okay, so Dan's telling us that the death pose happens because the dinosaurs are choking on mud. If someone was pouring mud down my throat, I suppose I might look like that. But I'm kind of stubborn in checking out the details for myself. I assume Dan's book would have more details I could investigate. Wow. Remarkably, the book has even less information than the PowerPoint presentation. It took two pictures from the Royal Terrell Museum to pad it out to half a page. Yikes, he even spelled Terrell incorrectly. The very fact that we have so many preserved dinosaur fossils shows that they were buried quickly because fossilization requires rapid burial in muddy ground. Yes, that's definitely true and well known by anyone who understands anything about fossilization. It doesn't have to be mud, of course, just buried by something. And, of course, quickly doesn't necessarily mean minutes or hours or even days. It just means before too much decay sets in or scavengers get at the carcass. The fossil record is full of dinosaurs that suddenly died in watery graves around the world. Um, I don't know that we can say watery just yet. Let's see what evidence you present. With many of them found in the famous death pose with their necks arched back as if drowning in mud. As if drowning in mud. So again, appeal to appearances. What does science say? Were they actually drowning in mud? Or is it just as if they were drowning in mud? Let's follow the footnote. Holy cow. That footnote is longer than the chapter that references it. Let's dig in. There is disagreement in the paleontology field as to whether the dinosaur death pose is due to choking while dying from drowning, or due to strong water currents arching the neck back after death. Wait, wait, wait. Where's all the talk of mud? These are two entirely new claims. Have you totally abandoned mud drowning? 
The footnote goes on to quote some scientists stating that the epistoponic posture is the result of a postmortem process. Do you know what postmortem means, Dan? That means it happened after death. Not the cause of death, something that happened to the body after the death. We're so off the path, can we even see the mud drowning claim from here? Okay, I think it's time to step away from the shots in the dark from Eric and Dan to find out what the scientific literature says about epistotonic posture. Dan is right that paleontologists are divided, but not in the way he suggests. The division is between those who advocate an antemortem paramortem cause, before or at death, and those who propose postmortem conditions. The first known publication about epistoponic posture was almost 100 years ago in the American Naturalist by Roy Moody in 1918. He observed the position in a pterodactyl, Archaeopteryx, Compsognathus, and several others. Moody's hypothesis was that these animals died in a manner of trauma consistent with the very real epistotonous condition in humans where the person's head, neck, and spinal column become locked into a bridging or arching position. This would point to an antemortem, pre-death condition. Jump ahead to 2007, when veterinarian turned paleontologist Cynthia Marshall Fox applied her experience with sick and dying animals where the posture is common when there is central nervous damage from suffocation, meningitis, brain trauma, tetanus, or poisoning. Hmm, suffocation might play into Dan's mud drowning proposal, right? Unfortunately for him, the symptoms accompany a long, slow death, not a swift or sudden one. On the other side of the debate, in 2011, Alicia Cutler led a study that placed plucked chickens on a bed of sand for three months to see if natural decay would lead to the mysterious death pose. The sand chickens did not contort. However, when Cutler placed chickens into cool, fresh water, their necks arched and their heads were thrown back within seconds and stayed rigidly that way indefinitely. In 2016, the experiment was replicated but using fresh ostrich cadavers, two on land and one in a pool of water. The bodies on land showed minor back arching, but the cadaver in the pool showed the classic form of epistotonus, supporting the postmortem hypothesis. Attempts to replicate in salt water have failed, so it seems fresh water is key. Okay, Dan said the disagreement was between choking while dying and strong water currents. The disagreement is really between slow death by asphyxiation brain disease and simple immersion in cold, fresh water. These are not the same things. In fact, one of the studies specifically rules out water current. They've done studies about this using chickens, actually, to show this is exactly what that type of creature would do during the process of choking and dying uh, in mud. Well, if that's true, that'd be something. Though first, is that some kind of admission that chickens are closely related to dinosaurs? Nah, can't be. Once again, I went to the references in Dan's book to find these studies using chickens showing exactly this process of choking and dying in mud. The only chicken-related study presented is Alicia Cutler's, which we've already talked about. On my own, I found a non-referenced 2015 study that x-rayed chicken carcasses in different head positions to study the vertebrae reaction without consideration of death cause. In all of these studies, the birds were dead and literally acquired from butcher shops before experimentation began. There is absolutely no attempt to determine a reaction based on the cause of death, and certainly no mention of choking in mud in any literature, secular or creation. Dan just straight up lied, inventing a study that never happened. And here's what's frustrating. There's literally no reason to. The literature he cites in his own book says that the best explanation for this pose is post-mortem exposure to water. That sounds so much more like a flood than drowning in mud does. Insanely enough, Eric is actually closer to being accurate than his expert guest. And they find that reptiles, when they drown in water, they go into the same death pose. And it's not reptiles in general, but theropods in particular, and it's not drowning in water, but being submerged in water after death. But he's so close. Guys, I would love it if you could maybe just redo it just a little bit to tell the story differently. You can leave everything the same, just tell the story a little bit differently. That's all you gotta do, and you can fix this to be actually scientifically accurate. Take your own advice, Eric. Forget the cause of death angle, that's not on your side. Just read the actual papers and let your viewers know the real science that suggests that this death pose is caused by submersion in water. Then say that fits with a global flood. Just, Just tell, tell the story, story a, little a little bit differently and you can, and you can fix this, this to be, to be actually scientifically, scientifically accurate. accurate. Man, these photos make me want to get back to the Royal Terrell Museum this summer. Who's up for it? I'm serious. Meanwhile, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up or thumbs down or leave me a comment with your thoughts. More importantly, 
hit subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you'll always know when new Paul Geo videos hit the internet. Until next time, later. <laughs>